everyone. It's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tier Studio. Today I am sharing with you my Gina B. Aaron's Design Team project, which is also a art journal page in my hashtag art journal habit 2019 um, daily art journaling journal. <laughs> yeah, that. Um, the challenge for the design team this month or the theme or whatever you want from Gina was fibers and inks and I decided to use both fibers and inks on my art journal page today. What could be more fun than that? Building up texture and interest on a page using fibers. Um, it's just something that I don't do often but I think I should do it more often. Uh, what I decided to do, I've, I've been really thinking about the holidays, upcoming holidays lately. Um, Every year, it seems to get more involved. You would think that when your kids are little and you've got to buy lots of presents and things, that that would be stressful, that that would be the time that you would be, you know, really kind of freaking out. But all I remember from that time is just, just I got everything done. I don't remember stressing over things. Now the kids are at a certain age. It's like, what do you get them? <laughs> what, what do they need? What do they want? It's hard. And also parents and, you know, other people that you need to purchase gifts for, you need to make gifts for, what do they want? They don't seem to like anything. Um, just, it all just has become way, way, way more stressful as time passes by. So I've already been thinking about it. It's not even Thanksgiving yet, although that's coming up and I'm thinking about the food I need to make, I'm thinking about the pies I need to make. I'm thinking about all these things and how am I going to get all this stuff done when I have all these other things to do? And all that stuff has been in my mind. It's been on my dreams. Um, I'm going to go travel to see my kid in December. And what can what art can I make him? Because he is the one who likes to collect art from me as gifts. What what will I be able to take? Should I mail things? I mean, there's just all these like things going through my head. And then of course. Pinterest, it makes it even worse. There's like a thousand fun recipes and ideas and I keep pinning all of it and I have this this category called This Christmas I Will and I, I keep pinning all these things and I want to make Christmas ornaments for my kid because he's got kind of a new life and a new place and a new whatever and I think it would be nice to have some handmade Christmas ornaments to put up at his house. It's just all these things are just jumbled in my head. So that's the reason that I decided to make kind of a Christmassy uh, winter sort of um, page today. The prompt for today for our journal habit is shrink. So I've got to combine fibers and inks and shrink all together. So for fibers, I, I found this cotton string and I thought, to myself, if I glue this on my page and make like a real textural, interesting um, pine tree look, how will inks affect it? How will how will the absorbency of ink on it um, will it work? You know, will it? It's cotton; it should absorb a lot. I also uh, had just the one piece of string and realized I wasn't going to have enough, so I had to get out all some some jute twine. And I pulled apart the jute and then made it into thinner strips to um, to match the width or circumference of the string. And it's green, so you can see where I glued it. Um, I did have to take some some of the glue on my fingers and roll the jute because it was coming apart. It was very fibrous. I was getting lots of things on my hands and, and really collecting glue on my fingers, which, yeah, anyway, that's what I did. I glued a bunch of fibers down and made sort of a pine tree, a Christmas tree or whatever, you know, winter holiday tree, because that's my very favorite tradition of the holidays is to have a tree. We, we're probably not environmentally correct, but they've already cut those trees. <laughs> so we buy the, quote, fresh tree every year. We don't have a um, artificial one because of the smell of it and the feel of it. And it just, it's important to us to bring in that natural tree every year. We go, we make a big deal of going and selecting one at the place. And anyway, uh, we usually buy it from the 
Boy Scouts because it's kind of like their little fundraiser or whatever. But I built my tree. It's very textural and I glued it with um, Thermoweb mixed media glue called, I think it's called iCraft brand. And it, it has a little nozzle that allowed me to kind of draw where it went. Then I used uh, Marabou alcohol inks to add different green colors on there and yeah it was it was really it worked really well the the string was very absorbent it was just sucked right up the alcohol ink and also some get in the background which you know kind of gave more depth to the page it was it was interesting and fun to do that then for the the prompt shrink I just went with the easiest thing instead of trying to <laughs> come up with something to use that prompt for. I decided to use shrink plastic. I have a whole drawer of shrink plastic and I think it's fun. You've seen me use it before. So I decided to use it with alcohol inks since I was already playing with alcohol inks. I sanded the surface a little bit to make it more porous, so just a little bit. And then I'm just putting <clears throat> drops of alcohol ink in different areas on the plastic. I wanted to use light colors because the thing that you need to remember about shrink plastic is that whatever color is on it before it shrinks is going to concentrate. It's going to become much darker. And maybe the idea, a better idea would have been to shrink them first and then put alcohol ink on them, which is certainly a possibility. But I thought if I use light enough ink, then they'll become vibrant, bright colors as they shrink. So that was what I was doing um, using different colors using some alcohol to kind of lighten up some of the areas and blotting and just trying to make it light enough so that when it shrinks down that 60% the intensity won't be so dark that you won't be able to see the color. I also tried some of the gold ink. Um, that one's from uh, Pinata. It comes in the set with Pinata. You get some gold metallic and it actually had a really interesting effect, which you'll be able to see in the, um, the close-ups at the end. It shrunk down, of course, and it made it look like gold leaf. Like if I had applied some metallic gold leaf, it's probably how, what you would have thought I did if you didn't know that it was that gold ink that had been shrunk down into little shrinky parts. So I just kept adding and adding. Um, I tried some blending solution. It didn't really move the ink. I was kind of surprised because usually it does. I tried my little air tool to uh, push stuff around a little bit. And I was just checking to see if my page was dry yet. Got to wait for that, that glue to dry. Spritzing on alcohol, um, blotting, just, you know, make, trying to make it a little bit lighter. And so this is what I end up with my piece of plastic. And then I thought that if I used some of Jeannie B. Aaron's designs, there's some, <laughs> there's a certain collection of her stencils. I call them the amoeba collection because um, that's just me. I think they look like amoebas, but they are different <clears throat> four square stencils that have like a solid piece and then you can put another piece on and another. you could stack them up into layers and make a design by by using them in layers which is what I thought was cool about them but I'm just kind of using this one and that one and making trying to make some different designs I thought that that ink was way too dark so I tried lightening it up with some alcohol and I really lightened it up because it took most of the ink off. So then I used some archival ink and sponged around the edge and used one of the spotted, this is like from the same stencil, the round thing and then the spotted thing on top. And that was my first ornament. I'm making shrink plastic ornaments and I made a lot of them, quite a few. So then I just used my heat tool to shrink it and it shrinks down into a much smaller piece. I kind of wished, wished at the first, the first one I shrunk, I'm like, eh, I wish they were bigger, <laughs> but um, they worked out fine. I, 
I guess just that one little one. I thought it looked so so lonely there on the page. But then once I got the rest of them on there, they it didn't it started to fill up. I just had didn't realize I was going to make quite so many. But I ended up using the whole piece of shrink plastic that I had applied alcohol inks to and it worked out really well. So that one is kind of a rounded diamond shape stencil and it has some other stuff that goes with it. I was just thinking about different things, um, cutting out different shapes. This time I used the alcohol to remove some spots, some white spots, and then I put the leaf thing over the top of it, sponging it to get in with ink. So there's lots of different types of inks. I used alcohol inks, I used archival ink, I used some pigment inks later on. Um, just trying different types of inks with the stencils. So that is what I did. That one is kind of a rectangle with swoopy sides. And it has that interesting um, square square shapes that goes to it. I am punching each one at the top with a with a paper punch. Then I thought maybe I should put some black design on there and I thought well if I use the gray ink pad by the time it shrinks it's going to be black which is pretty much true. So I sponge that with gray ink. That's the one that really looks like amoebas. It's got four different designs on it. Um, I can't tell you the names because I think they're just numbered, but this one to me looks like amoebas. <laughs> I tried each one of those because they have a lot of design built in. You don't have to stack it. So shrinking them down, uh, moving on to the next one. If I think the ink is too dark, I try to lighten it up with some alcohol. And I'm drawing on some of them with my Posca pins, punching holes, shrinking them down. This is pretty fun. I like shrink plastic. I recommend playing with it. Anyone who never has. <laughs> and it's a good way to use that, that particular prompt for <laughs> heart journal habits probably the easiest thing to come up with for me anyway. So there's where I got out some different pigment inks. Um, that one's a gold pigment pad and I thought that might be interesting to sponge some design onto the shrink plastic and it dries it up pretty well when you are shrinking it down with the heat tool. That type of ink doesn't dry on plastic particularly but when you do you put the heat on it and shrink it down it dries okay. What I thought I was going to do was I was going to put <clears throat> dimensional adhesive over these and make them super shiny. And that would seal in any, any ink that didn't want to dry. But I couldn't find it. <laughs> I'm telling you, I need an intervention. My, my studio needs an intervention. It's so messy in there. I can't find anything. I know that stuff's on the desk somewhere. I used it the other day. I, I couldn't find it. And I just, I don't have time to look around and spend a bunch of time. I've got so many things I need to do. I just, I don't have time to, to look for that. So decided not to use it after all. That's some color box pigment ink in blue that I put on that one through one of the stencils. And I think I have all of them done. So then I decided I would like the branches to stand out a little bit more from the background. It was kind of all one tone <clears throat> with the blue background. So I got out some white gesso in my finger and just like did sort of a highlighting with the white gesso by just rubbing my finger over the very tops of the texture. And that gave it kind of a frosty look, it gave the branches kind of a frosty look. So. Sometimes people frost their trees. We don't, but that could also just be a highlight. Then I got out some very fine metallic cord 
and I put it through the holes and tie a bow on each one of these um, ornaments so that they're tied with gold string to the tree. I'm not going to make you watch all of that. Um, that took me a minute. <laughs> but yeah, the, the holes were small and the string sometimes wants to fray. It's uh, metallic gold cord. If you've ever worked with that, you know it wants to fray. So then I have to keep trimming it to get it to go through the hole, tie a little bow, and glue them down um, using a craft glue, Aileen's tacky glue, to make sure that everything is glued well to the page because it's going to want to come up when this these pages flip. So... That's how I got my ornaments on there. I did actually stack one on top of another one, and you'll see those. You'll see that one in the extreme close-ups at the end. It looks cool to have one on top of another. But that was the only one I stacked. I wanted the tree to feel like it had a lot of ornaments on it. Then, just for fun, I took a gl gold glitter glue, the stickles, and just put like some little dots and different things here and there on the ornaments just to have them sparkle. I think Christmas trees should sparkle. They should have lots of sparkly stuff on them, lots of lights, and um, be shiny. That's just that's what I like. Then I felt like it needed something down at the bottom. I decided to stamp O Tannenbaum, which is German for, I think, O Fir Tree. Um, it's when I was little, this was one of my favorite Christmas carols. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Tannenbaum, sung it in the German and the uh, English, learned it in both. So I thought that would be a good thing to put on there. I got out some rubber stamps. I stamped it on my scratch paper first to make sure that it would fit and to make sure that I got all the letters on there. And then I used the pigment ink and stamped it onto the page and then used some embossing powder in gold to emboss it. So it's gold like the rest of the shiny things on the page. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to give a thumbs up, comments below, questions, subscribe if you haven't already, turn on your notification alarm thing. Um, all those things help my channel and of course I will have links to the products I used from Gina's design team Etsy shop well she has an Etsy shop and I'm from the design team does that make sense <laughs> I'll have links below the video of the different stencils I used and you can go and check out her shop she has all kinds of things everything from digital downloads to um, stencils to rubber stamps to things that are already printed like stickers and um, even some plastic template type things, all kinds of things on her shop. There's a lot of fun stuff. You might find something there that you would like to get someone for a Christmas gift or maybe something special for yourself. You can use the discount code SHELL15, S-H-E-L-1-5 um, on her shop to get a 15% discount for whatever you purchase. So that is always helpful. And that is it for me for today. I'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks. Bye-bye.